the mistake, they go, oh, yeah, well, shoot, I'll just do this. Would that change your answer, do you think? Yeah, yeah that gives you x equals 1. We're not going to get x equals 1 out of this. So great question. Instead, we say, all right, well, we, we can't, we can't cross-simplify. That's not happening here. We can't do that. We can cross-multiply. So here we'd have 9x, sure. We'd have 5 times 45. How much is 5 times 45, please? 225. Equals 9x. And, oh, wait. Hey, have you seen problems like that before? This is kind of cool about proportions. <coughs> proportions are two-step problems. You multiply across, and then you divide. That's it. That's all you got to do. So if we divide both sides by 9, of course, we do have to do both sides. It is an equation, after all. We get x on the right-hand side, and how much is this? 25. We just solve the proportion. So we can use the fact that these two fractions are equal to each other, the idea that it's a proportion, use a cross product, and then solve for a missing variable. Let me give you a little head nod if you're okay with that, that problem. All right. Let's try a couple more. I'll give you uh, one more together, a couple do on your own, and we'll move on. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, do we have a proportion? Yes. For sure, yeah, we got one fraction equal to another one, that's a proportion. How do we solve proportions? What are we going to do? Cross multiply. Great, yeah. Cross multiplication, or if you see the word cross product, you know a product means multiplication, right? So cross pro product means cross multiplication. Hopefully we'll get 16n equals 5 times 9, or 16n equals 45. Let's get rid of the 16, what do you do? Now wait a second. 45 doesn't isn't divisible by 16. So when you punch in your calculator, you should be doing 16 divided by. I'm sorry, uh, I said that backwards. 45 divided by 16. Yeah, don't do it the other way. That would be wrong. 45 divided by 16. Yes. Can you simplify that fraction? No. So you could either leave it 45 over over 16, but maybe in the back of the book it doesn't have that. It could have a decimal. So punch in 45 divided by, not a fraction button, but divided by 16, it will give you the decimal equivalent. How much is it? 2.8125. Say that one more time. 2.8125. Unless it asks you to round it, give the whole thing. If your decimal ends, give the whole thing. If your decimal goes off the screen, then you're going to want to round it, and it will tell you what to round it to. Are you with me on that? So here. If you're going to do this exact fraction, this exact fraction is not 2.8. That's, that's not the same thing. This fraction is 2.8125. Now, if this went on forever and repeated and repeated, sure, we'd be rounding it right now, and we'd have that approximate symbol. Remember that approximate symbol I gave you? That's what we'd have. But if it doesn't, if it ends somewhere, make sure you put that whole thing. You ready to try two on your own? Okay, let's do this. Seven twelfths equals forty two over x. Solve for x. Six over n equals forty-five over one twenty-four, and I want you to round that solution to the tenth. Which one? Twelve Sure, reduce it and then give it to me as a decimal if you'd like. Problems are kind of nice, aren't they? Go kind of quick for you once you get the hang of it, don't they? I like those two steppers. Then it would be what, 21 over 3? You know, I don't know. Let's find out right now. If we do our cross product, hopefully on your paper you have 7x equals 12 times 42. 
You do that 12 times 42 on your calculator, how much are you going to get? 504. How are we going to solve 7x equals 504 then? Sure. How much is 504? Exactly? Yes. Raise your hand if you got 72. Good for you. That's fantastic. Now, the next one, we do the same idea. We will cross multiply, so we'll get 45 and notice. Notice how even though it's n times 45, I can still put 45n because it's commutative, right? I can switch that around. n times 45 is the same thing as 45 times n. Are you guys with me on that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Equals 6 times 124. Wow, I don't know how much 6 times 124 is. How much is that? 744. Lastly, they're big numbers, but you have calculators now. It's great. Divide by 45. Now, it might go on for a while. It might stop, but my directions are around to the nearest tenth. So you can look at your calculator screen. Tell me what your calculator screen says. 16.5333333 forever. So we go 16.5. We look at the next numbers of 3. It says leave that 5 alone. You have 16.5. There's one mistake right now on the board. What is it? <coughs> we don't have the uh, little squiggly line for approximating. Great. So if you put 16.5 equals, uh, technically you're wrong because it's not equal to 16.5. However, you put this, and then I know you've rounded. Then I know it's approximately that amount. That's the appropriate symbol you need to use there if you're going to round. Show of hands, how many would feel okay with what we talked about so far? Now, there's one more thing we have to look at. So we were to wrap it up. Take us about two minutes here. something like that. Hey, is it still a proportion? Yes. Is it still one fraction equal to one fraction? Absolutely. Look at that's one fraction, right? Even though it's got garbage on the top, it's still one fraction. That's one fraction. Can you still do a cross product? Yes. Yeah, let's try it. Just be careful. Watch me on the board what we're going to do here. If you do the cross product, Sure, on one side, I'm going to get 3 times 7. It doesn't matter the side. On one side, you're going to get 3 times 7. Nod your head if you're okay with that. On the other side, look what we're doing. We're taking x plus 2 times 8, or 8 times x plus 2. Are you with me on that? 8 times x plus Is this appropriate to do 8 times x plus 2 like that? Explain why. Yeah, you're right. I do. What this says is, I'm trying to take 8 times this entire expression, right? Not just the x, but also the 2. How do you show not just the x, but also the 2? What do you put on your paper? 2x. 2x. No, we don't put 2x. 2x plus 8. How many times 8? 2x times 8. We put okay. some parentheses. We put parentheses. Because we're trying to say here that 8 is getting multiplied not just by the x, but also by the 2. This is going to be our distribution. Do you guys see how we're getting from this problem to this problem? Raise your hand if you do feel okay with that. Yes, no? Okay. How are we going to get rid of the parentheses? So that's our 8x, what now? 16. Equals? Hey, have you seen problems like that before? Yes. Oh, yeah. We can solve that. How are you going to solve that? We're going to get 8x equals, looks like 5 to me. How do you get rid of the 8? <coughs> so x equals 5 eighths. You can do 5 eighths, or you can give me, um, let's see, 0.6125. I think if you do that on your calculator. Is it? Yeah. So you can leave it 5 eighths or give me the decimal there. It doesn't really matter. Could you do the same thing here? Okay, just make sure when you're doing this, you're giving me 4 times x minus 3 in parentheses first, and 5 times 3 on the other side, just like that. Then you would distribute and solve that down. We'll end there today.